she comes up tonight on Dave at 9 p.m. She's come up here. Please welcome Joe Brand. <laughs> Hello. Uh, were you a bit scared? No, I, I love doing that, actually. Yeah. There were other things that I did that I was far more scared of. Like what? Like going off a very high diving board with the kind of, you know, Olympic champion type <gasps> and going down the sewers. That wasn't very... I oh. know. Oh, <laughs> Not Tom Daly. You weren't up a board. No, it was Tom Daly's erstwhile partner, Blake Aldridge. All right. The cheeky boy yes. from South London. So, is it just... The height that's the big thing when you're at the top of a board. Like, I couldn't, I can't dive. I can't dive off the side. Well, you know that thing that you get at, at, at school, I think it is, people say, if you dive wrongly off a high board, your stomach will split open. <laughs> I was a little bit worried about that. <laughs> I was also about w worried about diving in and emptying the pool as well. <laughs> <laughs> Of endless um, sort of types did, of jeopardy. Did you, did you manage to enter the water head first from the high board? I did, <gasps> thankfully. Wow. Although, um, you know, I spoke to Blake about it and he said that he dived wrongly once off the top board and um, mucked up but both his retinas just detached and he came up out of the water and he's blind. And he told me that just before I jumped. <laughs> that was helpful. Not a good uh, advert for no, the sport, is it? Really? No. And what about going down the sewers? I mean, that must have been thoroughly unpleasant. It was thoroughly unpleasant, but it was very educational. And the thing about it was, I thought I'd go down, um, kind of go, oh, that's really horrible, then get used to it. But actually, it got worse the longer I was down there. Mm -hmm. It was very unpleasant. But apparently you've always been a water baby. What, what was the, the fascination? Did, were you always a good swimmer? Yeah, I always loved swimming, and actually I was a diver when I was a, a child as well. I used to do a lot of diving, and then I spent my adolescence near the sea, and I love going in the sea. The bigger the waves, the better. Oh, and are you one of those, Joe, goes in in February down in Brighton when it's freezing and all that? I am, and I have to say on this show, I went uh, uh, to a Lido in South London in February, and it was four degrees. They break the ice to get in sometimes, don't they? I know, and there were a lot of notices around saying... Beware hypothermia. So I've got plenty of padding. I'm like a baby seal. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the sea monster come from then? Where was that appellation given to you? Well, that came because I was a psychiatric nurse at the time and I didn't actually want my nursing colleagues to know that I was secretly doing stand-up. So I just wanted a stupid name. And it just so happened that the guy that I was going out with at the time used to call me the sea monster. Don't <laughs> ask me why. That relationship didn't last very long. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do the, the entire career, but was there a moment when you knew you could make a go of stand-up from being a psychiatric nurse? Of quantum leaps, that's the quantumist I think I, I've ever heard of. But was it a tricky decision to make, or did you literally, no pun intended, jump with both feet? I mean, when did it happen? Um, well, I started in 1986. I mean, in a way, because I was a psychiatric nurse in a walk-in 24-hour uh, psychiatric, psychiatric emergency clinic in South London, that there weren't any fears for me from drunken audiences. And actually, you know, the sort of abuse you get as a nurse is far more imaginative and far more cutting. Audiences aren't that imaginative. They're just kind of going, F off, you fat cow. <laughs> Well, that's a pleasure compared to what I'm used <laughs> to. Thank you. <laughs> so it was actually that much easier than being a psychiatric nurse. It was, really. One of the great delights for you at the moment must be having your first novel turned into a film. I mean, this is the, the excitement that all novelists dream of getting. I know, it's amazing. Yeah, the BBC have commissioned it to, you know, for, as a 90-minute film. So I'm, I'm gobsmacked. I'm really pleased. Deep. Tell us the title. Okay. Uh, it's called The More You Ignore Me, which is actually the title of a Morrissey song. Yeah. Are you going to do the screenplay for it, then? Is it now? Uh, I've done the screenplay. I'm on the yeah. fourth draft at the moment. Fourth draft. Now, you yeah. had Geoffrey Archer on, who said, I finished this book after the 14th rewrite. You see, I would have lost interest by then. Yeah, well, only ten more to go for me, then. <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy the, the, the job, the, the task of doing it? I did, really, and actually what's so great, if you've written the book yourself, you know it so well and you know the characters so well that in lots of ways I was the best person to do it because it was so easy for me to kind of get into it, really. Do you get a say in the casting? Can you decide who you wanted it? 
I've asked for you as the lead, but they've kind of... <laughs> Very wise. <laughs> no, it wasn't angling, really, it wasn't. <laughs> but I hope you do, I hope you, do. I hope you get, I hope I get the job. Uh, getting On, we've got to talk about Getting On, which is this comedy that you're involved with, which, which I think is coming back, isn't it? We're getting more. It is, we're just about to write um, series three, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's set in a kind of very low-key um, NHS hospital ward, which is completely populated by women, all of them elderly, and uh, the, the two... Sort of medical Cranford, then, really? It's not that glamorous, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, and Joe uh, Scanlon and Vicky Pepperdine, who I wrote it with, we're all middle-aged menopausal women. We have Joy sitting together having tea, I'm sure you can imagine. Ooh, your turn for a hot flash. Um, <laughs> we just wanted to set a comedy somewhere where we could have middle-aged, irritable women, uh, that's the three of us, and elderly women who you don't often get to see on telly, so... Um, it's a it, bit uh, it, down market in no, some ways. No, it's become a thing, this, and I think most people who watch telly want to see people of all ages on it. I mean, you don't just want to see young folk. You want to see experienced folk who, and if they can make you laugh, the age is immaterial, isn't oh, it, really? I absolutely agree, But yeah. the trouble is, if you get on the bandwagon as an older actress or whatever, you get the reputation, oh, God, it's one of the whingers about, I haven't got any work, so I'm going to whine on. But is there any, any sign of it swinging the other way, Joe, really, and that, that people are beginning to wake up to this now, that we want to see all ages? Well, I think they are. I mean, if you look at the case of, for example, Miriam O'Reilly, who um, was a country file presenter and felt to be a bit over the hill, appealed against that and won the appeal. I think it's very much in the news and therefore it's something that people are much more aware of and they're thinking about, really, because you get a load of old geezers on telly, don't you? I mean, look at Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> How... he's, a, he's a load of old geezers. Is that right? You know, no. But, you know, let, let's just look at the female alternative. How likely is it that an 83-year-old woman will be presenting a prime-time show on Saturday night. The truth of the Not matter likely. is it, how likely is it that an 83-year-old woman would want to present a prime-time show? She's probably got other things she wants to do. Given enough cake, I'd go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Only a few years to go. Do you know what is really good? It's hearing on Chris Evans in the morning, Moira Stewart doing the banter with him, which is priceless. I it's mean, great, Moira reborn it? and being allowed to be funny, not just read the I news. I know, isn't she lovely, it's yeah. Really Bless you. Lovely of you to come in. Good nice luck with pleasure. all the projects. Dave, tonight at 9pm, you can see her diving into all kinds of watery trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Brand. Thank you. Thank you.